tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Our town has a siren that only I can hear. By N. M. Brown. I know it sounds batshit. I'd think the same thing if I was reading this from your position. But the annals of history seldom lie. I'm not talking about biased reports and recollections. I mean cold, hard, factual history. The first time I heard it, I passed it off as being an annoying case of tinnitus, although I'd never experienced it before. The sound was faint and shrill, like an air raid siren infected with helium. Then, plants and vegetation in town began to die. Again, I didn't think much of it. After all, snow was due on the ground soon. It was natural progression for things to die and grow anew as the seasons change. It went away after a day or so. Either that, or I'd figured I'd somehow just gotten used to it. I remembered when my kids used to fuss as babies. It would drive my ex-wife absolutely crazy, to the point of tears sometimes. She'd scream at me, demanding to know how I was able to function so calmly with all the goddamned noise. I'd just kind of trained myself to tune it out. I don't mean that I'd ignore them completely, but babies are grunting, noisy little humans. If I went nuts over every little sound, I wouldn't survive. So that's the train of thought I was having the first time I heard the assaulting beacon of sound. After a week or so, I'd kind of forgotten about it. Then I heard it again. It sounded closer this time, near enough to grip my senses, but just out of reach for me to be able to pinpoint geographically. Do you hear it? Can you hear what I hear? I asked passers-by desperately, my voice half-robbed by the whipping wind. I was sure I looked like a mess, my eyes wild with paranoia. Towards the sky, past the trees? Most shook their heads and looked at me incredulously. The rest ignored me completely. It still seemed like I was the only one who could hear anything out of the ordinary. Strangers, the ones not staring at me like I was off my nut, continued laughing and chatting as I stood there absolutely dumbfounded. All verbal articulation came to a halt the moment the fog rolled in, and I couldn't decide if the sudden atmospheric silence made things better or worse. The sirens still hammered into my mind like a dulled pickaxe. But anyway, the fog. Thick sheets of it billowed across the ground and sky, carrying with it a moisture and temperature I couldn't quite place. It almost felt like steam, but that didn't make sense. As much as I hated to drive through it, I had to. There was no sense in hanging around slack-jawed with the rest of them. Unintelligible murmurs, fat with uneducated guesses of its origin, already floated through the dense air. At that moment, anything would have been better to get sucked into than that. However, I didn't make it very far, but not for reasons that you would think. You see, the traffic on the bridge two miles from home was locked up solid. An exasperated sigh escaped my lips as I noticed people getting out of their cars and looking over the edge. What the hell happened now? I thought bitterly. Following suit, I put my Dodge in park and got out. It didn't take me long to see what they were all looking at, and suddenly the weather conditions made perfect sense. 
poor birds. I'm sorry, guys. This is going to be sad, but the poor birds struggled to fly through the sky with bubbling feet. They propelled away from it the second they made contact, like it burned their skin. That was exactly what it looked like happened. Lifeless bodies of fish speckled the surface of the water as they rose to the top. It seemed like the previously almost frozen water was fucking boiling. There was no reason for the water to ever be hot, but especially not in the dead of December. Fellow drivers gasped in awe as tiny cyclones began to form offshore, almost too small to see. At least I knew I wasn't completely crazy. They may not have heard the siren, but they sure as hell experienced the effects it brought. I thanked God, the devil, and whoever else involved that it wasn't a warmer month. I couldn't imagine a swimmer being caught out in that. Eventually, the steam and traffic cleared, and I was able to make it home safely, if not sanely. Things moved on, as they do, and soon, I was sure the day of the mass fish fry would be an event of the past. Something random with no connection to or implication of anything at all. Sometimes things like that happen, you know. Or maybe, maybe it was a fissure deep underground. That made sense as well. The next time it happened during the middle of the night, waking me up from a sound sleep... This time it was louder still, and my body shook with tremors of terror with anticipation of what it might bring. My body sagged with relief a few hours later when it abated with no events. That is, until the sun rose and I opened my front door. Devastated bodies of birds and animals peppered my yard and street at least a dozen or so. My neighbor across the street walked out to check her mail, almost screaming at the half-graveyard our lawns had become. Did you hear it last night? I asked her. She shook her head confusedly. It sounded like an air raid siren around 2.15 a.m. You didn't hear it? But it was too late. She'd already gone back inside. Fear began to grip my every waking thought. It felt like the world around me was slowly coming to an end, and I was the only one who had any warning about it. And no, I hadn't gone to the doctor about it. Who the hell would believe me? The one person I did mention it to passed it off as bariatric pressure or some shit like that. I sure as hell didn't understand it, so how did I expect anyone else to? The siren was becoming louder, closer, and more frequent. It was only the next morning that my thoughts grew fuzzy as my mind was crippled with a vague sense of dread. Hairs stood up all over my neck and body, like a reaction to static electricity. The siren was louder than ever this time so loud that it made my vision blur at the corners. It was as if it was sounding in my very own living room, right next to my already throbbing head. I had to do something to get the pain to wane, long enough so that I could at least look outside or even call an ambulance if this thing really was some kind of physiological event. Improvisation had never been my strong suit, but I always tried to do the best I could with the clumsy faculties I was given. Without thinking, I grabbed my leg pillow and a roll of masking tape I'd kept on my dresser for painting. My stomach rolled as I was confronted with the fact that I hadn't washed the pillow in way too long, if ever. Weeks of ball, ass, and thigh sweat surrounded both sides of my face as I did my best to wrap it behind my head to cover my ears and tape it into place. I'm sure I looked like an asshole, but hell if I cared right then. I knew that I smelled like one, at least. 
But to my bittersweet relief, it helped enough for me to know that A, it wasn't just in my head, and B, I'd be able to stand up and walk to the window. The distant sound of a car crashing lay underneath the blaring noise for just a moment. A moment long enough for someone to lose their life. My mouth dropped open in shock as I saw my neighbor open up her front door. Stop! I cried out, not that she could have heard me. I hadn't even been able to hear myself. My fists pounded against the window in an attempt to get her attention. Whatever the hell this thing was, she needed to go back inside. It worked. Joy and relief, two feelings that had become foreign to me as of late, filled me for the first five seconds that our eyes met. She looked up at me, smiled and waved, completely oblivious to the blaring noise. However, that didn't matter. My attempts had worked. I would be able to help keep her safe. Then, the blood began to flow. Streaks of crimson ran from her nose, fell from the lower ledges of her eyelids and trickled down from her bespeckled ears, turning the faux diamond earrings into rubies on their descent. I wouldn't say that her head exploded, per se, but that sure as hell what it looked like by the time she crumpled to the ground. My temples became numb with foreboding, and I dove into my couch cushions in preparation. The ground seemed to vibrate as the wailing siren reached a cataclysmic crescendo. The glass of the windows tinkled as it shook, stretched to its breaking point with the pressure and pitch of sound. I knew they wouldn't hold for long. The thought occurred to me to move away from the living room window, but it was too late. I tensed as bits of glass peppered my body, the couch and the floor. Then it just… stopped. My body struggled to acclimate as the roaring volume gave way to deafening silence. Breaths came in panicked huffs and trembles as I rose to my feet, careful to avoid the shards of glass nestled in my bare bare carpet. I shook the rubble and debris from my slippers before placing them on my nicked feet and surveyed the damage to my home. I was sighing in relief that my bathroom mirror, window, and shower pane hadn't been affected when every cell froze in my body. A noise. Not nearly as powerful as before, but just as alarming, resonated from the street in front of the house. I shuffled over to my front door as fast as my battered feet would carry me, before throwing it open and peering outside. I couldn't believe my eyes, and what was left of my hearing was being quickly assaulted by squeals of maniacal giggles. Shock and terror filled me at what my eyes beheld. A baby, not more than nine or ten months old, sat naked in the middle of the broken street, as if every single event had led up to its arrival. He had thick curls of jet black hair that came to a distinct widow's peak in the apex of his forehead. The baby also had the darkest blue eyes I had ever seen. I'd have assumed they were brown or black even if they weren't gleaming with joy. My mind reeled to think of where it could have come from and how it could have survived all of this, but what mostly bothered me What unsettled me to my very core was how it was laughing. Or, more so, what exactly was it laughing at?